Welcome to the Rival Podcast. I am your host, Neil Maligno. Today we are covering Week 8 waivers, Week 8 bowl predictions, and your not-so-obvious lock of the week. You are now listening to the Rival Fantasy Sports Podcast. Let's go! All right, Week 8 waivers. I spoke last week about waivers, and I mentioned that it's important when you know, we're, we're doing this, not only is it week seven or week eight or week nine, you have to think more ahead for your waiver. So again, this past week that transpired in week seven, we've seen exactly what I'm talking about in instances where you need to get ahead of the injuries, ahead of the trades, ahead of bye weeks, ahead of all these kind of things, kind of try to predict. You're not always going to be right. So sometimes these waiver moves you make are going to end up not being for the reason that you had kind of hoped or planned or predicted. Um, but it's better to stay ahead of it than behind it. Right now, we're going to talk about players in these waivers. And again, you may already have some of these players. You may not. They may not be available in your leagues. Um, we, when we do this show, we do it to the, the whole audience. It doesn't matter who's out there. We're not uh, considering this a niche in terms of whether you're playing Dynasty or you're in a really deep league or you're in smaller leagues or you're playing Standard Scorn or PPR. These, these are kind of, you know, garnered towards everything. Um, so, you know, I brought up, I brought up last week, for instance, um, the Kenyon Drake situation. He balled out in week six. I knew that a lot of people were going to pick him in week seven thinking, hey, he had this big week. This guy's good. The Ravens are going to get more carries. But I had told you, listen, this is the Ravens backfield. They have J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards is coming back. Justice Hill. All, all, all these things are happening, right? So Kenyon Drake, while he had a good game, and while a Ravens running back is probably often going to have a pretty good game, um, you can't predict it with all these guys. So this is a perfect example. Kenyon Drake went off last week. People probably picked him up on waivers, went crazy. And then this week, Gus Edwards returned and, and had himself a day. So um, this is those kind of situations where, you know, as these things happen, you want to stay ahead of them. You want to not fall into some of the traps. Use your waiver priority or your waiver money on things that you really need. That could really help you rather than get caught up in those traps. Um, Christian McCaffrey was also traded last week. I could not get ahead of that news in terms of I put the episode out before that. Um, so I did not get to talk about whether Foreman or Hubbard was my guy in terms of that. Obviously, we would have covered that if the news happened, you know, before the show. So in that case, uh, just in case in your leagues, because again, this is a situation where everyone had so every league, Christian McCaffrey was on someone's team, but not always Hubbard or Foreman, although in in uh CMC's case, maybe one of them, one or the other, because he has injury history. But if not, here, here's where I'm at with this. Foreman is the guy I like, Deonta Foreman. Again, if you listen to last week's episode, uh, me and Bruce talked about it. I chopped it up about it, and we kind of debated it a little bit. He, he disagrees with me on this factor, um, but I am a Foreman guy. I believe he's the better player uh, in fantasy perspective. Hubbard, obviously, if you're in Dynasty, he's the younger guy by three years, uh, the guy they drafted. But Foreman is good. I really like Foreman. Um, so for me, Foreman and Hubbard both stood in well for him for Christian McCaffrey, obviously. So we feel like this backfield can still flourish, still do well and be productive in fantasy without Christian McCaffrey, which is great. But I am personally a bigger Foreman guy. Um, so that's who I would have told you to pick between the two. Obviously, both did pretty decent, but Foreman did outplay him a little bit. Um, so if Foreman's available, for sure, pick him up. If Hubbard's available, for sure, pick him up. They're both worthy of a, a pickup at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, Again, these are the situations where if you had Foreman, you were kind of thinking ahead of whether Christian McCaffrey got hurt, not even the trade aspect of it. Or if you had Hubbard, then you were ahead of everybody else. Um, now, there's some people who don't believe in you um, handcuffing your running back, which is another conversation for another day, honestly, uh, which is if you had Christian McCaffrey and then you went and drafted one of those two, um, what, what you're doing is you're kind of limiting the upside of your team in terms of that player is never really going to produce like potentially another player that you would have drafted because he's you really only have him to back up the player if he gets hurt. Uh, in that case, it's a little different and you could use that position for something else besides um, Foreman or Hubbard. But now you're in a situation where if you did do that, you have the Panthers starting running back technically who will split carries. And you have Christian McCaffrey, who's going to be the 49ers starting quarterback, uh, running back at some point. So it would have been interesting, right? Like that way that one would have worked out. Um, but in this case, again, if either is available, pick them, pick, pick either one up. And if only one's available, um, if it's Foreman or Hubbard, either way, they're still valuable to you. But if you have a choice and it's, it's Foreman for me personally, um, staying on running backs, if you're looking ahead a little bit, I got a bunch of questions in the last episode about players to stash. Um, uh, Kyron Williams is a good one, uh, for the Rams right now. And then Pacheco, uh, with the chiefs, uh, again, if they're available, 
depending on your league, depending on how smart your league mates are, depending on how deep the league is, they may not be available, which if they aren't, it is what it is. You should have uh, thought about this ahead of time. But if not, they're worth the ads for sure. If still available, if you have that space, uh, you know, you got one guy that you, I mean, one spot that you're not sure what to do with. Those guys are both worthy of filling it. Uh, from wide receiver, uh, Paris Campbell, uh, who Bruce actually mentioned, I want to say it was last week, maybe. Um, Bruce may have mentioned last week, but um, he he seems to still be doing good. Uh, he held on again this week as well. So that's a good sign for Paris Campbell. The quarterback situation is changing there. So I wouldn't be concerned about it. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I don't think it's going to dramatically affect the offense as a whole. Jonathan Taylor's still great. He's going to help that offense move. He's the engine of it. And then you got guys like Pittman, Paris Campbell, um, a bunch of uh, talented tight ends, different uh, Alec Pierce out there. So you got plenty of weapons on offense. I don't think the team would have made that move, not just the injury to uh, Matt Ryan, but also just in general, I believe they believe uh, in Ellinger. So I think it's fine. So don't, you don't panic on any of those situations. He's still worth picking up even with the QB change. Um, the other wide receiver that I like is uh, Hardman, if he's available in your league. Clearly, he did what no wide receiver has done in terms of the touchdowns for rushing and all this kind of stuff. It, I, I think it's happened. We spoke about it last episode again. He kind of broke some record or set a record or however you want to look at it. Um, but whatever he did is not common. So, again, if you're picking up a Hardman, you're looking forward. You're not just looking at what he did. You're going, okay, he's not going to repeat that. That's kind of absurd to believe he will. There's other – he hasn't, you know, had this consistency – going in the offense. So it's potential that you're going to pick him up and he's not going to ball out like you hoped. You know, it's it's all it's all out there. The opposites are out there, but it's a Patrick Mahomes offense. Andy Reid calling these plays. They seen what Hardman was able to do. Again, sometimes a guy might not be getting used a lot, you know, going into a week and then he tears it up and it does open up something for him. You know, kind of opens the eyes up of the team. Like, oh, this is a really valuable option for us to go to. So uh, Hardman is a good pickup. Uh, to make a priority on. And then I talked about the tight about the quarterback for the Colts, Ellinger. You also have PJ Walker, who who played for the Panthers and beat Tom Brady. You have Taylor uh Taylor Hankey uh in um Heineke Hankey uh and with the commanders. These guys are all worthy of pickups in deep leagues, super flex leagues if that's if they're available. Um but I mean again if you're in a situation Again, if you we last week, I mean not last week, last episode me and Bruce talked about this. There's a situation where PJ Walker and Taylor Heineke, and then other guys like more so, you know, Mariota is Daniel Jones is uh, uh, there's one more up there, but I forget who it is off the top of my head. These kind of guys are outperforming Tom Brady. Uh, Geno Smith is the other one. They're outperforming Tom Brady. They're outperforming Aaron Rodgers. So be bold. Be bold. Don't be afraid to play a Geno Smith, a Mariota, a PJ Walker if you want to get crazy over a Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. Don't keep playing these guys because of their names. If they're not performing and you're losing games because of it, don't keep playing them. Take the chance. Take the risk. Because obviously, Tom Brady's not helping you. Aaron Rodgers isn't helping you. Maybe they're not getting it done for you, right? Uh, Geno Smith is right now. You know what I mean? Daniel Jones is right now. These guys are just doing it. So don't be afraid to be that, that person in your league who benches one of those quarterbacks for a week or going forward for one of those other guys who are just not the bigger name, not the bigger play. Um, these, these are the things you have to do. Again. You want to separate yourself from the rest of your league. You don't want to be like the rest of the league. You want to separate yourself. We do that through getting ahead on waivers, not going week to week. We do that by making bold start sits. We do that by making trades and uh, taking advantage of whatever kind of trade opportunities are out there. Um, again, typically thinking ahead. And these are the kind of ways, uh, you know, you, you you take that advantage. So you got to do it. Um, so PJ Walker, Ellinger, uh, and Taylor all worthy of consideration depending on your league setup, scoring, roster sizes, all that kind of stuff. All right, that is really it for waivers. Obviously, we can go much more uh, in-depth and deeper in there. There's other guys out there. Um, You even look at um, Thornton from last week, who we recommended didn't have a big week uh, this week, uh, week seven. So again, these guys are going to be hit or miss sometimes. That's just the way this works. It's the way football works. Even the studs have duds uh, of weeks. So um, again, some of these guys are going to pick up. They're going to ball out. Some they're not. You got to think ahead. You can't think just on that one week that's upcoming. But there's a lot of buys, a lot of injuries, and you got to consider these. Also, when it comes to the injuries, like Brees Hall just got hurt. I know we talked about this again extensively last episode, but a guy like James Robinson gets added, uh, traded to the Jets. That's major. That's a major move. So don't 
don't shy away from that. Don't think that, ah, you know, he's not going to be Brees Hall. Yeah, he might not be, but he also could be. Um, he did really good with the Jags early in the season. They traded him because they wanted to get ETN all the workload, basically. So you got Michael Carter there already. He's definitely worth the pickup if you're in a situation where he's available. Um, and I think, especially this upcoming week, he'll be the guy more than James Robinson. But overall, I think James Robinson has tons of value as well. So that's a guy you could trade for. Um, or if he is available for some crazy reason uh, in your league. Again, I say this because when, when you're watching, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm, I'm catering to all audience in terms of league sizes. So I want to make sure that, that, that that's out there, you know, because we can go super crazy deep, but we also have to say kind of surface level because not every league is not built the same. All right. So that's it for waivers this week. Let's go ahead and get into bold predictions. And let me mention this too. Last episode, Two episodes ago, last episode, a lot of comments asking start sit questions, waiver moves. Feel free to do that. Drop in the comments and let me know any questions you may have in terms of who to start, who to sit, um, who to pick up, who to trade away. Whatever your questions are, drop them in the comments. If this is easier for you on YouTube, if not, um, if you're on, if you're listening to get an audio, obviously you can't have a comment section there. Um, follow us on Twitter. Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want. We post constantly on there. I'll answer your questions there as well. So whatever you prefer, whatever route is easier for you. Obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, the comment section is just the easiest. Um, so do that. If that's the case. Um, all right. Bold predictions, week eight. I called Terry McLaurin last week. As many of you mentioned, shout out to you guys who showed love um, for it actually playing out really well. Um, I said that he would have his best game of the season. Not only a good game, not afraid of Taylor Heineke, Heineke, Heineke. Uh, but that he would have his best game of the season. That's exactly what happened. Um, let's shoot for a similar outcome this week. Let's see what we can pull this week. While Brian Robinson is the starting running back, Antonio Gibson will continue to outperform him in fantasy. I'm staying on the commanders this week, as you can see. Um, so Brian Robinson, he's the starting running back. When that happened, everybody was like, boo-hoo, Gibson, he sucks, get rid of him. Told you this was going to happen. But as you've seen last week, Antonio Gibson still outperformed him because he got the touchdown and the reception. Um, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's the starter. Um, this happens all the time. Guys are called the starter. Or they don't actually perform better than the other guy that's there. So and my bold prediction is while Brian Robinson is the starter and running back, Antonio Gibson will outperform him, um, not just this week coming up, but the rest of the season. So when you come to the end of the season that this year, you're going to go, who had more fantasy points, Antonio Gibson or Brian Robinson? That's going to be Antonio Gibson. How about that? End of season, better player. So do not be afraid. Do not get scared off of Antonio Gibson and let it be a lesson to you that when situations like this arise, if the player there who's there is good, these things happen. And you actually kind of relate it to Bailey Zappi um, and Mac Jones even. This is another weird situation that's happening. It's not the same thing because only one can play necessarily. One, not, not like, oh, one's a starter and one's going to get work. Like only one can really play a game. That's the goal. Um, but in this situation, again, you had Mac Jones who had a great rookie season and then he gets hurt and Bailey Zappi comes in and he plays great. And then this last game, Mac Jones started to not play well. And then Bailey Zappi got called back in. And this is one of those situations where people are like, yeah, right. It's Mac Jones' job. But the NFL team's job is to win the game, right? So while they declare Brian Robinson or anyone else in this position a starter, and he played well. Don't get me wrong. Like Brian Robinson played well. Like the commanders are you know, in a good situation where both of these guys are bringing a lot of value to their team and helping them win actual football games. Um, so I just don't want you to get caught off guard by who's the starter, who's not. Sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in this case, Antonio Gibson for me will end the season as the better fantasy producer um, and only and, and in week eight, but not only week eight. All right. Let me know what you think. I'm curious. Do we do we got a bunch of Brian Robinson uh, stands here or is there some who are feeling me here on the Antonio Gibson take again? Drop it in the comments. Um, all right. Let's jump over to lock of the week to wrap this episode up. Lock of the week for week eight. For those who are new to the show, lock of the week. I, I give a player who I feel is a lock for this week. Clearly, I can give obvious ones all day long. I can give you the obvious names that we expect to play well. And of course, even those guys have bad games. But the point is, I don't want to do that. If you want easy ones, if you want gimmies, if you want the obvious players, you can find that anywhere. Um, but here we're doing not so obvious lock of the week. The player has to get 10 plus points by the end of this game for, me, for it to be a successful 
not so obvious lock of the week. So these are fun. These are ways to hold ourselves accountable to have some fun. I went with Rondell Moore last week, uh, expecting him to get more love. You know, when Holly wrote Hollywood Brown out, um, I know I knew uh, Hopkins was coming back. Obviously, I mentioned it, but I thought that he would still have to be worked in, shake the rust off a little bit. Not the case. Kyler Murray said, you know what? We're just going to give all the targets to Hopkins. And that's exactly what happened. Rightfully so, I assume. So the uh, Rondell Moore situation didn't work out how I want to. Although he's still, I don't think, I still don't think he's a bad option. Um, it's just you're not going to really have consistency with him like you would Hopkins, who's going to just every single week, week in and week out. You don't even worry about it. Um, let's go. This week I'm rolling with New York Giants wide receiver Wandell Robinson. Chopped it up with a couple of you also in the comments about this one too. But um, his, wor- his workload keeps going up. He's making plays. Daniel Jones is looking better and better. He is going to have a big game somewhere at some point soon. He's had some decent games, but he's going to go off at some point. You want to be a part of that. You want to get it. It could be week eight. It might not be. But this is another guy where Daniel Jones, as we've talked about, is running the ball great. (laughs) Daniel Jones running the ball. He's a quarterback. You're like, what? Yeah, he's running the ball great. He's throwing the ball pretty good. He doesn't have a lot of weapons. They're all either injured, not living up to the hype, not doing what they're supposed to do. And in this case, Wondell Robinson is in a perfect situation to um, really find himself with a lot of targets, some big plays, and uh, a big week at some point here. Uh, But he's definitely a guy worth stashing, worth getting on your team, and worth flex starting at this point. Um, So uh, Wondell Robinson is my not-so-obvious lock of the week for week eight. That's 10 plus points guaranteed for you. Uh, we hold ourselves accountable here, folks. So we don't only call out the good stuff, we call out the bad stuff. So uh, we will do that either way next week. Uh, we will acknowledge it. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for the waivers, for the bold predictions, for the not so obvious locks of week eight. Again, if you missed our week eight, seven recap, you can catch that. It was the last episode we dropped before this one. Um, good luck to everyone who's watching in week eight. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. When we look at the analytics, it looks like, listen, so many people are watching. So many people are consuming the content and getting great advice. And we're chopping it up all in the comments. But like 99% of the people who watch it are not subscribed. So please do that. Um, it's, it's very quickly. It helps us greatly. Uh, I know it doesn't. It may not mean as much to you. It may not sound like it's a big deal. But when you hit subscribe, it means a lot. Same with when you hit like or you comment or you share it. We appreciate all of that. Um, to those listening on your on your podcast apps, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is, um, please hit the subscribe button. This way you don't miss an episode either. Uh, we'd love for you to leave us a quick review, share it out on Twitter or wherever you're uh, frequenting. And then you can always find us, speaking of social media, on Twitter, IG, uh, TikTok, all at Rival Fantasy. Uh, let us know that you watch the show when you hit follow, and that way we can follow you back. It's hard to follow everybody back every time we're missing alerts and stuff like that. But if you say that, if you send a comment, we'll know it's you. Um, so that way you could do that. Uh, and of course, Visit RivalFantasy.com. The site has launched. We have three games on there for you right now. This is just another extra way for you to have fun while watching football, or even if you're watching basketball or baseball, whatever sport you're watching. Um, Right now, there's football, basketball, and baseball up on the site. Um, Make a deposit on there. It adds another layer of competition and fun to the games when you're watching three different styles of games. You have challenges where it's basically like uh, Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, and you you put money down on either side. There's Fantasy Book. Uh, which is kind of like parlays. You just pick over and unders on uh, two to five players and you can win money that way. Or fantasy bingo, which is a patent pending game that we're working on that we have out right now um, where you buy bingo cards and then you pick your roster, who you who you think will hit the achievements uh, on that bingo card for you to get bingo. So it's a lot of really fun games, fun interests and twists on them all. Um, find your favorite game or pick all three or whatever you want to do. Have a lot of fun doing that. I'm telling you this because we have a fantastic promo running right now a hundred percent protection on your losses up to $50 after your first deposit. So go in there, get involved, have fun. Let us know if you have any questions. Again, you can hit us up on social media. You can hit us up in the comments, wherever you want to do that is fine. Um, But again, thank you everybody for the support. We love you guys. That is it for today's episode. I'm out. (laughs) 